And we're going to talk about what this little guy does here that'll save your life. Riding the XR, the S1000, this thing is so sick. Like, this is the ultimate mountain bike. The ultimate. So, what I wanted to talk about is cornering and you know, this is what you're looking for. You can go to anyone's bike. You can look at their history of how they ride right here. It tells you everything. This is what we call chicken strips, all right? And this is good. You want some chicken strip. You don't want to see the guy that rides barely, like right on the edge of your rubber here because you don't have any. And we're going to talk about what this little guy does here that'll save your life if you ever get in a bind you want this much more real estate on your tires so you can use it and we'll get into that right now So here we are, we're on one of Butler's roads, you can buy his map <clears throat> anywhere, or go online and check him out, but we're, we're heading to a gold road, <clears throat> which means it's a very, very good road, awesome road. And this road map from Butler shows you all kinds of cool sweet locations of the sweet twisted up and the most sickest scenery so you should check them out definitely want to give another shout out to Pikes Peak Motorsports you guys are awesome great customer service for hooking it up All right, we're here in Deckers. This is it, just this little building in this Cirkin River. That's the town. And here's the sickest road. All right, I wanted to show, get into cornering and show you guys the proper way to feel the most confident in your corners. And just like my dirt bike videos, everything is body position. Same thing with dirt. It crosses over to the street. Body English is everything. And so what you want to do is I do all my braking before I get in the corner. I get set up whatever my body needs to be. Like see how they got two corners here? I want to be set up for that next corner. So my body's looking where I want to go. And you just move over. You want to put your body to where you want to go and your bike will follow. And back to the chicken strips, you don't want to be this guy that dips in like this, how he follows his bike like a stiff board. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to corner hard like this because you're going to run out of your tire real estate on those chicken strips. What you want to do is you want to slide your knee slide it against your fairings you slide it in and you can feel your knee drop that's what you're looking for you want it to drop down your fairing so you can get that center of gravity keep it centered to your bike I mean I don't suggest you guys banging your knees out like racers do because we're on roads we're not on the track you don't really want to test the ground with your knee on these roads so what I do 
is I keep my legs in as tight as I can and just slide my knees on the bike and keep them in. So that lower center of gravity is just the tightest you can keep it on your bike. This way, you're locked in the corner. And what it does is it tips your bike up. When you dip in and lean into the corner, my bike stays straight up. And that's what you want. You want the most traction on the ground. So see, I got a lot of tire on the ground from just leaning. And stand on the bike opposite of the corner. And so when you're in this pocket, you can really feel the bike and what it's doing. You can really feel that corner and you can stick it. If you get scared, you feel like you're gonna push the corner because you have too much speed, well, that's when you can carve again because what you're doing when you stand your bike up, you're leaving that little bit of chicken strip area I was talking about before we took off. That means you have a little bit more tire you can use. So if you really need to, you can turn it in and really carve in to get that corner through so you're not pushing off, off the road or into the oncoming traffic. So it's kind of like a fail safe. Because you can, you're here and then you carve it. You can get back on the road because you know you have tire left. But once you use up that little bit of chicken strip, you're done. You're, you're gonna lose the front or the rear end. And another thing you need to know about corners and riding in general, your body position, you want your lean on. You don't want your bike to be pulling you like this. Because you have no control when your bike's pulling you. You want to be up forward. You want to have that lean on. And you want to feel it in your ass. When you take off, that bike's going to push you. This way, you don't have to hang on with your hands. You never want to hang on with your hands. Because you have no control. You want to have it pushing you the whole time. And so when I'm up here, my hands are just effortless. You don't have to hang on because your ass is stuck in your seat and your bike's pushing you. This way, like my hands are free right now. They just float. All they're there for is my throttle and brake controls. You don't want to be hanging on with your hands. You'll pump up. You won't be thinking clearly because your hands won't operate like you want them to do. You want to be able to hold on to this bike with your body the least amount of effort you can and it's Memorial Day weekend so look at there's a lot of people out we gotta be careful so body position you want this thing to push you and man this XR is so sick this thing is so predictable it's so responsive this is the best bike I've ever ridden in my life the smoothest bike it's got this electronic shift assist and this thing shifts better than I do apparently because when I shift up my clutch I can feel it like letting go like ABS would in your your brake pedal in your car so it's very weird so I I suggest if you own one might as well don't use the clutch because the bike knows how to shift it better than you do and then back to the cornering I want to clarify what it means to turn left to go right and to turn right to go left. It's a touchy subject. You don't really turn your bike right to go left in a corner. So I want to clarify that so you guys don't hurt yourselves. What you're doing is you're setting your bike up for whatever angle you need for that corner. So you want to be two, three corners ahead. And that's why when you steer with the the handlebars left to go right I'll show you right here this is all hand pressure this is nothing else but going left to go right that's look at my bike it just whips I'm just putting pressure on my butt on the handlebars to set up this is I'm not leaning it this is all handlebar left to go right right to go left and all it's doing is setting up for the corners getting that angle 
and this will really help you on a chicane. You know, when you gotta connect two, three corners together, you do that twist and it just whips your bike right where you need to. And that's what it means to go right to go left. So right now I'll use it, I'm set up. Now I'm not turning left to go right anymore. Now I'm in the corner and I'm letting my body position with throttle control and, and minute input on the handlebars to get me through the corner. Because everything is body positioning. And once you get these steps down and they come natural to you, you're gonna just, you're riding, your corners are gonna be so smooth, you're gonna feel the corner be that much more confident in your riding abilities. So work on those. Practice. See what those handlebars do when you turn it right on a straightaway. It just gets that bike moving for you. That's all handlebar. I'm not doing nothing but the handlebar movement. And it's so small that you don't want dramatic amounts of pressure. You just want to start feeling your bike. You want to know what it does. And corners, oh, bikes and corners go together. So good. I mean, this is what they're built for. And this road is sweet. Oh yeah, okay, dirt on the roads. Colorado, very, very, very bad with dirt on the roads, especially after a rain. So, this is another game I want you guys to play. I want you to pick a line and, and stick it, okay? Don't ride in the middle, don't ride like you're on a track, don't cut the corner where you're cut across the apex in the middle of the corner. You don't want to do that on roads, especially if they're dirty. Like this one's nice, you can see there's no dirt. But pick a tire lane. You know that every tire from a car will clean a path for you, no matter how much dirt's on the ground, they'll always be a clear path unless it was a rain a night before you went riding. So I like to stick on the outside here. And I just hold that line like I am on my dirt bike single tracking it. You just hold that line. And this way you practice holding your line and you'll never fall out. You'll never cross. If you cross that dirt in the middle apex, you're gonna lose that front end and you're done. So, always watch out for that. So just pick a lane here, stick in it, hold it through the whole corner. If you gotta slow down to do it, do that. You don't wanna crash. You just wanna be comfortable holding your line. This way when you see dirt, you won't hesitate, grab a handful of front brake and wad and launch into the river or a car. You're gonna be calm, cool, and collected because you've been practicing to hone in your street bike skills and your confidence in your street bike skills. That's the key. You never wanna hesitate. You always wanna be on top of your game. Don't ever, ever hesitate. It's hard, it's a way harder said than done. So, or easier said than done. But with these little drills, I'm telling you, you you won't, when you react to dirt, you just stay in one lane. And, and try both lanes, don't just stay on the outside one. Just watch yourself on the, the inside lanes because you don't want to be hanging off the line and the car comes and smokes you. But it's good to be in a different line just in case you have to be in that line and you won't hesitate because you've been playing with both, both lines. And that's what really it is. You gotta be confident in that your skills enough to hold your line where you want your bike to be. So nothing ever scares you to where you freak out and don't know what to do. Play with your brakes. Like right now, do a brake test. See how fast you can slow down, you know? And you don't want to grab a handful, you just want to feel it. This is everything about riding dirt, street, trials, everything is feeling. You have to really be one with your machine. It's like doing a dance with your girl. You gotta be one, you gotta flow. You gotta know what she does. So you're that much more confident in your skills because you know what your bike's doing already. And these will really help you be a better rider, smoothing things out. 
especially on this Beamer. Holy shit. This thing is the sickest bike I've ever ridden in my life. You know, a lot of people say, the vibrations, the vibrations of the XR, it's terrible. Don't ever buy one. Well, guess what? The vibrations aren't bad at all. You guys just, uh, I guess I'm a two-stroke rider and I'm, I'm used to vibrations, but honestly, you're buying a race engine in a touring frame so it depends on your the type of rider like i'll i'll stand these vibrations all day i don't care how vibrated it is this thing is so sick and it's not even a bad vibration at all but if you're that guy that just wants to be comfort and touring and you know i would go get a twin like the multistrada because that's a way smoother power on a longer distance kind of ride but if you really love the sport aspect and the race aspect dude this combination with this frame and body uh, i can't i can't even exp like it's a mountain bike that's what this bike was for the mountains and that's what we're riding on today